Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another riveting episode of From Start to Finish with Firepreneur, where we're documenting small business journeys to success. I'm your host, Natali, and today we have a true trailblazer in our midst. Hailing all the way from Ghana and making waves right here in the United States, we're joined by the visionary entrepreneur behind NJ Hattie, Mr. Ya Amote. Host, Ya's journey is nothing short of inspiring, and his commitment to excellence in healthcare education is a story that deserves your attention. He's the brains behind NJ Hattie, a leading training academy specializing in sterile processing for healthcare professionals in New Jersey. But before we delve into Yaw's incredible journey, I'd like to take a moment to thank our amazing sponsor, who make it possible for us to bring you these inspiring stories week after week. So a big shout out to Firepreneur, an all-in-one platform where learning, creativity, collaboration, and community come together. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Welcome to our all-in-one platform, where learning, creativity, collaboration, and community come together. Firepreneur is an emerging web technology and business development platform, which offer great services in freelancing, digital services, e-learning, and networking marketplace. Discover our extensive collection of e-learning courses taught by industry experts to expand your knowledge and skills. Learn at your own pace, access courses anytime and anywhere, and unlock your full potential. Browse through our marketplace of digital products created by talented artists and creators. Enhance your digital experiences with high quality and unique digital goods. Connect with skilled freelancers who can bring your projects to life. Get access to a wide range of services, from design and development to writing and marketing. Join our thriving community of professionals, entrepreneurs, and enthusiasts. Collaborate, share insights, and grow together in our supportive networking environment. Experience the power of e-learning, digital products, freelancing, and networking in one comprehensive platform. Join Firepreneur today and experience the power of connections. Visit firepreneur.com for an exclusive offer. Firepreneur, e-commerce on fire. Uh, terminology. And as we talked about chapter one, um, we said that introduction to sterile processing, the importance of sterile processing, why we do what we do, and, and the understanding of what we do, okay? But chapter two will now bring us more into the cases that we pick for the what? For the next day surgeries, that is what that we're talking about. But for us to be able to understand that, we need to know what we call medical terminology, okay? So, we said that what? Importance of medical terminology. SPD technician requires this knowledge of medical terms to help them what, succeed in this type of job that we are all in now, okay? So, medical terminology is the language that we speak as medical professionals. That's the language that we speak, okay? So, who are the professionals that came up with these type of medical terminologies? That makes it requirement that we have it in place. We have AORN, we have ANSI, we have AMI, we have TJC, we have the CDCs, okay? So now, we said that the AORN, these are a group of nurses that have gathered to write um, standards or guidelines on how to take care of patients in the operating room, okay? And then ANSI, as the name goes, American National Standards War Institute, they are the ones that approve of Amy's guidelines on how to process this surgical instrument, how to clean, how to uh, sterilize, how to package, how to even maintain it, okay, in the storage area. So that is what these folks do. The Joint Commission, who do you think the Joint Commission will be? They are like what? They are like the police who always go from hospital to hospital, announce, unannounced, but they mostly do the unannounced the only time they announce is when somebody blows a whistle or a whistle blower you know goes in and say that okay they're doing something wrong and then they come in and check whatever they're doing okay to make sure that they um giving the best practices preface root and then the surface also come about and then i mentioned that you need to know certain surface for you to be successful in taking your board exams and you know coming out 
with flying colors. So with those surfaces, we have plastic, which is surgical restoration. We have what, ectomy, which is what? Surgical what, removal. Let me go back to the plastic. I said that we have either surgical restoration or what? Repair, Repair or re reconstruct, okay? So that is that. An example, we can have what? Atroplasty. And atroplasty, plasty is the what? The surface. And the atro is the what? The root. So a surgical repair of the what? The joint. Does that make sense? Atroplasty. So those are some of the few things that I want you to know um, for your exams. We good? Done? Okay. <laughs> Done. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Now, to our incredible viewers, we want to hear from you. Stay tuned, keep watching, and engage with us throughout this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, drop your comments below, and make sure you've hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an episode of From Start to Finish with Firepreneur. All right, folks, let's get back to our captivating conversation with Yaw Amotang and discover how he's transforming the landscape of healthcare education right here in the USA. Can you just celebrate yourself? Give us a little brief information about you, your upbringing in Ghana and how you got here in the United States. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, very interesting. So I'm Yao, I'm Watain, and um, as he said, um, I'm the CEO of uh, New Jersey Allied Health Training Institute. Um, which is based in New Jersey, um, the United States, of course. Um, so, I mean, my journey from Ghana to this place is very interesting mm -hmm. uh, because I remember I was in Ghana um, in college. Um, I mean, here they call it college, back home university. university. <laughs> um, I was at Tech um, in my um, second year going to a third year. So, um, tech, uh, yes. let me ask, what hall? Um, I was at Katanga Hall. Okay, it's you nice know. to meet you, fellow. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Katanga yes. Hall, too. Katanga <laughs> Hall. Yeah. So um, I was studying engineering to precisely, to be precisely, um, um, dramatic engineering slash engine, um, civil engineering. Um, I mean, it was a little bit challenging because um, whilst even I was in Ghana, I was um, doing work study because. Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, I'll be in school for lectures in Kumasi. Okay. And then um, on the weekend, I'll come to Accra, which is the capital city of Ghana. Yeah. I'll come to Accra to do one or two, you know, gig mm -hmm. here and there to get myself some money yeah. for the week. So it was a little bit challenging mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, the fees and everything. Yeah. So one time a friend told me about US lottery and not to put that commercial out there, but just let everybody know how um, I was able to get to the United States. Um, so I applied for the U.S. lottery and God being good, I was selected um, to come to the United States. So right in there, I went through the interview process, everything, go to the United States. Um, I had to defend my course yeah. at Tech yeah. because I cannot just abandon my um, career mm -hmm. since I don't know what I was going to face in the yeah. United yes. States. Yeah. So I just deferred my course, um, took a couple of uh, loans from friends here and there so I can get my visa fee, I can get my plane <laughs> ticket. My parents even didn't know about all of this, mm -hmm. that I was even traveling. So when I go to the United States, I pick up a phone, I told my mom, mom, mm -hmm. This is what the Lord has done. I'm in the United States. Mm -hmm. To the glory of God, I'm here. Um, so don't panic. Mm -hmm. Everything is going well. Good. So I started off coming to the United States. Whoever hosts you is very important. Very, because important. very, very, very important. important. Because if you are dumb, you'll be dumb. Because, <laughs> yes, because, because it's either they make you or they break they you. They break you, yeah. Okay. So just imagine a college student coming from Ghana. And I was one of the smart, yeah. you know, first class student in the class. Yeah. Um, so coming in here and then the host said, yeah. you have to look for a job yeah. in a store, yeah. in you're, a you're, mall. You're even lucky you, or, came, you came with a green or, or, <laughs> or you have to, or you have to, uh, um, or you have to go look for a security job. Yeah. So I, I, I found myself a security job. But in the process of doing the security job, I, I said to myself that this is not for me. So 
through you know talking to people i realized that there was something called sterile processing mm -hmm. so i decided to you know take that class and but then jersey didn't have any classes going on in jersey okay. you have to travel all the way to new york harlem mm -hmm. to um do the class so that's where i did the class and they didn't have anything in place for you to do your clinical hours it's just go sit in class talk to you um, read the test books to you and then at the end of the day when you pass the test you have to go look for a place to do your clinical hours so that is how you know this whole journey of you know teaching this course and becoming a sterile processing uh, 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 um, professional came about all right thank yes. you brother thank you thank mm -hmm. you so that means uh, what you did in tech has nothing to do with it. <laughs> no, no, no. It has got nothing to do with it. Everything was let go. Oh, good. Yes. So this one, you are you, you are you running that with passion, or is something that you just want to do for the money? So, so, so it's not about want, wanting to just do it. Um, even though back home, you know how back home Ghana education is, um, it's tough to get into certain careers, yeah. especially when you want to go to medical school. When you're going to go to pharmacy school, it's hard to get into those areas, yeah. especially based on your background. Yeah. Um, I have desired to be a medical doctor in which, I mean, when I came to the state, even I even applied to a couple schools in which I was accepted. Mm -hmm. But looking at the finances of it and being here as the first generation from my yeah. family yeah. to be in America here, it, it was going to be tough University. when you don't have no support. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I had to decide and make other adjustments. So I went into nursing program, mm -hmm. which was easier because I can school at the same time work, work yeah. so yeah. that, you know, it will not fall short somewhere. Right. So that is how I got myself into a nursing school instead of medical school. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. So, uh, how long did it take to go through the nursing program? So actually it took me, I did the four year program. Um, I started off at a community college yeah. and then oh, the I did two years, yeah. So SS no. County College. Um, Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, right? Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, it was two years, but I didn't take two years. Um, I, took, I took all my classes within a year I was done. Good with the two-year program and then I transferred to a four-year college which is Cardwell University yeah. in Cardwell yeah. in Jersey also um, and I did the rest of the two years over there yeah. and I came up with the bachelor's degree in nursing mm -hmm. yeah whilst I was working as a sterile processing technician all right good yeah good. so that means uh, uh, your background in uh, engineering and that of nursing mm -hmm. right now is switched all together it's switch it's okay, good so it's right now you're a nurse right now I'm a, I'm a nurse slash sterile processor. Good. People that come here most of the time after they have a degree, they just jump into finding a job. Mm -hmm. So did you get a job in the nursing field or you, you didn't apply? So truthfully speaking, um, I've never worked as a nurse. I actually tried one time, but um, it wasn't kind of a thing <laughs> for me because I have developed so much passion for what I do now, working as a sterile processing yeah. technician. Because working as a sterile processing technician, I had I had worked my way up. So I, uh, I started off as a technician, became a coordinator, uh, moved up the ladder again, became an educator. Good. And from educator, I became um, a supervisor. From supervisor, I became a manager. Mm -hmm. And from manager, I'm currently an assistant director at one of the biggest Hustle. systems in New Jersey. Right. So that is what I'm currently doing. So based on where I am right now, I feel very comfortable. And like they say, you have to love what you're doing. Yeah. It's, no not passion, just no yes. yeah. it's not always just about the money. Yes, it's not always just about the money. The money is very important. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't love what you're doing, you'll get the money. And at the same time, you'll not enjoy the yeah. money. Yeah. yeah, it's very true. That, so I asked that question. I know people that come here, they, they have other skill set, but mm -hmm. because of the money, they just yes. want to be something they are not. They, are yes. not. they will jump into, a, especially nursing. nursing African, yes. they like nursing. Yes. So once they are nurse, that's they are working all right, but there's no happiness. So that is no, very true. There's no passion in it. Now, my first host mm -hmm. who helped me get a job in the security with the security and stuff, yeah. my second host, he actually was the one that influenced the nursing. Mm -hmm. Since I couldn't go to, you know, medical school, he's like, hey, I mean, it's easy to get a job with this one, but if you want to go to engineering, I don't know how true it is. That could be a myth, but um, 
if I had knew, I would have gone back to finish my engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I would have gone back to finish my engineering. All right, good. In which I mean, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Someday, you never know. All right. Yeah, I would have right. gone to finish my engineering um, and then become an engineer. All right, good. If so, medical school did not work. Thank you. So, Rana, you have a gist of your background in Ghana, coming here, the challenge and stuff like that. Yeah. So, on the business journey, how did you jump into business? <laughs> well, well, I, mean, I know in America, business is yes. meant for some people. <laughs> Even those people I'm talking about, you, you mm -hmm. should be born here. Yes. And you should be belong to a particular group yes. of people yes. before you can even get money to jump into business. Yes. So what, what, so, what was the journey like? So I, I look into a business that will not cost me to have any capital to start. Mm -hmm. And knowledge is something that everybody should get, mm -hmm. I will say. Um, so being in sterile processing and with all my challenges, as in coming to the state and how people come in and they just tell you you can either do CNA, you can do uh, HHA, or you can do security, or you can work at the airport. Airport, yeah. Pulling bags. Yes. Before Pulling I thought, bags, I thought yes. somebody told me I work in the airport. I thought they, they were pilot. No. They were flying no, the airplane. No. no they no. dress some dress they nice. They dress very nice. But you see uh, them maybe yeah. are you flying an airplane? The next no, 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 I went no, there, no, they no. were pulling bags. So what pulling is bags. this? Yes, yes, yes. Huh? So. Anyway. So going through that phase and knowing that they have this course, which is sterile processing um, course, and a lot of people didn't know about it. And the course was only taught in Jersey, I mean, in New York. New York. You couldn't find it anywhere in Jersey. Mm -hmm. So I had a friend in which I started this whole idea with, I discussed this idea, we started the whole thing. Yeah. But you know how business works. Sometimes when you guys are growing, you need to separate, separate yeah. so that you guys can expand that knowledge to yeah. the rest of people. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I started off and I started recruiting people, teaching people how to become sterile processing where, where technician. Was um, this, was, this was in, um, I started off in Newark, mm -hmm. and then um, I moved New Jersey. New Jersey. Right. New Jersey has been the hometown, yeah. Yeah. you know. <laughs> so I started off in Newark, and then I moved to Maplewood, mm -hmm. and I've been in Maplewood for a couple of um, years now. Mm -hmm. um, it's been almost about thirteen years. Thirteen years. Yeah, thirteen years in this field, and I've, since I started, since I've been teaching, I've been teaching almost about eight to ten years now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. <clears throat> so knowing what people are going through, they don't have any type of career. Yes. Because if you're working at the airport, that is not a career. You, that's not a profession. Once, once you are fired, once you it. are fired, that's it. But I realized that once you have something like a certificate, you have a lances, mm -hmm. and you work in healthcare, no matter where you go, you can get a job. Mm -hmm. So me being an example, going through that process, I said to myself that, okay, why keep all that to myself? If I can speak it out to some people for them also to you know benefit what I'm benefiting yeah. so that is how the whole um, business came about and um, I, I registered the school and then after registering the school um, it was hard in the beginning yeah. it was really really hard um, sometimes people will register and they will not show up yeah. and you have rented a place so you can imagine you have to pay for the rent and don't people care. don't show up and it's, it's tough so that was how the whole thing started yes uh, so uh the process you started uh, how many students did you start with i was begging people to come to come so truthfully speaking mm -hmm. i started off in a church i affiliated with, i am affiliated with so i was more of organizing it for free mm -hmm. just to put my name out there okay. because their success is my success mm -hmm. I don't want to go out there preaching about what I do. Mm -hmm. I want people to see what yeah. I do. Yeah. So I started off with them and they were very successful. Some are even supervisors, some are you know managers now. So through word of mouth from them, that is how I was able to get that credibility that people were looking for. And then after that, I happened to come in contact with my host here. Yeah to design a website for me and then also to start off oh, with oh, my Google. Oh, 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 what year was that? I when, believe, when, when did we meet? <laughs> um, I believe we met in 2012, if I get it correctly. Yeah, 13. 2013, <laughs> right? 13, yeah, yeah, yeah. 12, 13, there about, yeah. So so with, with his um, expertise in IT, 
he also put you know some things in place like the google review and students started you know um commenting here and there and that is how you know this thing um is blown okay yeah good so you started with the people from your church you did for free for some time then yes moving ahead what when was the point that you felt like this is something that I want to be in it when people were starting <clears throat> when, when were you serious with it so before i was looking at say if i get five people i'm okay i get 10 people i'm okay um but now even i don't have the space to contain the people mm -hmm. honestly speaking if i'm to get a bigger space i can boldly say i can get about 30 people mm -hmm. but not just the number mm -hmm. remember it's word of mouth that is being said spread out there the whole thing, yeah. spread the whole thing so i i look at quality so if i'm able to produce about 10 quality people i'll prefer having about 30 people where I will only have few as successful people and meaning that this cannot be a continual yeah, business yeah. but if I get 10 people and they are very successful they're going to bring another 10 yeah. so always will keep me in business so is there any, any breakdown in curriculum or any department in, in the program or <clears throat> so this is how we have our program set up so this program um, is set up for eight Saturdays um, so the eight Saturdays technically is supposed to be eight hours on a Saturday. So eight times eight is about 64 hours of study in for this program before you sit. So two phases to this program. One, the in-class and then two, the clinical aspect, aspect. which is the hands-on training, which is 400 hours, mm -hmm. okay? So you come in class every Saturday. We, we, we have a syllabus that we follow. We have a couple of chapters, we broke it down. Yeah. So um we do that after that we register you to take a board exams once you pass the board exams we are fully we have affiliation with some hospitals around us that we send you to to do your clinical hours so we guarantee people a place to do their yeah. clinical hours yeah. it's not one of those gimmicks where you come and at the end of the day we'll be tossing you around and all of that we have a place that we can send students to do their clinical hours so these are the two main parts in class and then the 400 hours all right good so how many programs so is it just one program so or? it's just one program for now we we just concentrate or focusing on one program okay. which is the um crcst mm -hmm. central registered um i mean certified registered central service technician okay yeah all right good so uh the process of registration how, the, how, how how is it like do people have to apply online or in person or how, how is the process so broken? so so we have we have two um we have um two ways of doing it it's either you come in person or you can do it online mm -hmm. and with the online we have two ways of doing that also so online you can go to the website register and then we get information and i give you a call um, even though we didn't get there yet of being able to pay online and all of that but I give you a call and then you can um, transfer the uh, uh, um, registration fee and all of that or um, I email you the application and once you receive the application you can now um, send it back when it's completed and then we take it from there mm -hmm. yeah okay so is it online in person so uh, on a capital basis Mm -hmm. How much are we looking at somebody that wants to set up something like this? How much in terms of uh, capital to run it? To run the um, program? Program, yeah. That's a good question. Aside that, do you so, need any certification to set up something like this? So this? something like this, you don't need certification. All you need is just your skills, mm -hmm. number of years of experience you have in the field, mm -hmm. and then also um, registration of um, the, the, the program. Um, as in registering with the state because I mean whatever you get you need to report to you know the state yeah. um, So th those are the main thing that you need to have and also the location mm -hmm. and then if you have affiliation with hospitals That is the main the main key um, If you don't have affiliation with a hospital It's gonna be hard to run this program because the students will be done mm -hmm. and they wouldn't have anywhere to do their the clinical the hours yeah. And if they don't do their clinical hours it's useless mm -hmm. the certificate become useless mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, so uh, you have how many students have what completed the, the, the program? So uh, uh, since right I've, so since I've started, right? yeah, since I've started teaching, I have taught almost about four hundred people. Look at this: New Jersey, people. Maryland, Connecticut, New York. Those are a few places, and normally people 
um, who cannot do it online, they will come in on Saturdays. They normally go for Airbnb. Airbnb. Mm -hmm. um, they come over Friday night, enjoy classes on Saturday, and then they drive back to their state. Mm -hmm. Since it's only one day in, um, in a week. Good. So that means you have people that are working, students right now, that are working in different uh, hospitals. Different hospitals, yes. That uh, is a part of testimonial what yes, correct. support your business. So <laughs> yes. uh, how many people get jobs and after completion? Are there any failures or all the people that finish, they, they, they will be to enroll right away? I mean, of finish. course, there are some people that are not working, um, but it all depends on the individual. Like I always say to them in class, once you come in and you follow all the instructions I give it to you, I don't see why you shouldn't be successful. Mm -hmm. Because the person that I'm, the person, me as a person teaching you, mm -hmm. I'm very successful mm -hmm. in the field. Yeah. So my success should rub off your success. Mm -hmm. So if I'm successful, you should be successful. Yeah. So once you follow the instructions as to what to go through, what to do, you should be successful. All right. Yes. Good. So uh, in terms of the business uh, process, <laughs> you setting up and coming this far, aside the initial what, struggle, are there any challenges that you, you, you face in the process on the, on the professional side and also when it comes to uh, anything that anybody goes through in terms of business uh, uh, journey? I mean, um, there are a couple of challenges we faced in the beginning. Um, in the beginning was, you know, getting the number of uh, students that you want to get because everybody in business, you're looking at the capital that comes in and then the capital <coughs> that you know um, goes out. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm, if I'm renting a place, which is costing me almost about $1,000, mm -hmm. of course, I need to have certain amount of yeah. uh, student to keep up with it. Yeah. And you know, uh, renter, renter is not something that when you have the people before you pay, yeah, no. whether you have the people or not, you, you, don't <laughs> you still have to pay. You, so you don't, you don't beg them. <laughs> yes, you can't negotiate that <laughs> yeah. one. It's non-negotiable. So, um, so there's a, there's a cutoff number of people that we need per class, and that was a challenge in the initial stage. But once. Um, the word was spread out that we were able to, you know, get those um, cut-off numbers to be able to run the place. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is one. And then two, getting affiliation with hospitals also wasn't an easy thing because it's a lot of requirement that you have to meet. And um, I'm even currently working on one hospital that is a whole lot of requirement. The insurance policy and all of that that you have to buy. So it's, 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 it's also a challenge, yeah. um, which is not an easy thing, but um, um, that also has been successful. Right. And then the next thing also is the time with the student, because you, you get in folks that even how to use a computer is tough. Mm -hmm. And this work also requires you to use computer because at the end of the day, your board exams, you have to you know, um, take it on a, on a computer. So the, the, IT, the IT aspect is where some of these students are lacking. And so it makes it a very big challenge because now it's like you're teaching sterile processing, but at the same time, you have to yeah, teach yeah, IT yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, computer have them out. Yes. Yeah. So um, that also is being a challenge. But okay. aside those, it's not of a major challenge, but I mean, I would say it's a challenge. All right. Especially yeah. people with no background Good. with that. So you want to talk about a little bit of, about your numbers or how much? Not not like the run figure. Let's say when you're going to do this. <laughs> so roughly <clears throat> median level or set figures or how, how do we how do in you, terms of what, what the where, business? Where do we put you? <laughs> the business. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> that's very interesting question to ask. I mean, enough is not enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I can say. Enough is not enough. Um, I go by the day on um. I'm always working hard and I'm always looking to grow. I'm always looking to improve on whatever I have. So if I have six today, tomorrow I'm looking at having about 10. Ten. If I have 10 tomorrow, I'm looking at about having 15. So I'm always hungry for growth. I'm always hungry for, you know, numbers. Yeah. And I, the numbers I, are very important. Good. I have, I have a personal question. Mm -hmm. You're an instructor right now. You have yes. all kinds of people. Yes. White, black, Spanish. Yes. Different race, or I have I have UN UN. Yes, so I have United Nations. Everybody is yes. everybody's invited, yes. right? Not just Ghana or Africa. No, people. it's not. It's not. It's not just. It's not just uh, uh, um, targeted uh, uh, um, ethnicity mm -hmm. or country. Mm -hmm. No, is is 
So some of I call I call it UN because I mean the United Nation is made up of yeah. almost the entire countries yeah. in the world. Yeah. So I have people from different different. I have black and white. I have Filipinos. I have uh, Indians. I have you know the Asians. I have uh, Americans. I have Africans mm. and all of that. So right. yeah. So it's not just one. Um, Good. Particular target. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's good to know that about your business side. But right now, on your personal side of life, how do you balance your personal life? Are you married or? Yes, um, I'm married with a with a beautiful wife with two beautiful kids, a boy and a girl. Um, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. But you always have to find or strike the difference between business and then also family. When it's time for family, you have to be there. When it's time for business, you have to be there. Mm -hmm. Because once you let one outweigh the other, it becomes a problem. Challenger. Because once the family weighs more than the family, I mean, once the family weighs more than the business, now it's going to be a challenge because yeah. where is the source of income going yeah. to come? And once the source of income weighs more than the fa family, now you're losing your what? Your family. Yeah. Because you're not going to see the, the, the process that your family is going yeah. through, especially when you have little one. Yeah. Um, I have two under two, yeah. <laughs> so you can, you can imagine. So I want to see how they grow. Yeah. So yeah. what I do is that to have everything scheduled, planned mm -hmm. for the week. That is why these classes are only organized for Saturday. Saturday yes. A lot of people are coming to me to do some in the weekday, mm -hmm. but I can't do that because um, in as much as I have the business, I have other stuff that I'm taking care of too. Yeah. So I have everything in a schedule, planned schedule that um, I'm able to give everybody a little bit of the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that means right now you play like three different roles right now. Yes. Aside your your, your business that you run right now in that professional side, mm -hmm. you also a managing director in a, yes. in a, in a in hospital. The hospital. Yes. Then also a husband to a family. A family. Yes. So you, you, you can't shave one and say, uh, I won't shave this, then uh, replace yes. with this. But you have to what, play. I have to play it in such a way that everybody get a little bit of the happiness, a little right. bit of that. All yes. Right. Good, 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 good. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you. Very impressive. So uh, I have some few questions that uh, some of our viewers want to ask you. Okay. They want to know, because uh, uh, <coughs> there are people that are watching us on our platform, they want mm -hmm. to know. Uh, if they want to sign up for the program, mm -hmm. what is it like? Uh, is it more territorial, like academics? Is it formal okay. or is it like uh, something that anybody, mm -hmm. do you have to be like, hold a degree or okay. how, how does it work? So, so truthfully speaking, um, this type of courses you can, mm -hmm. it's more of like a self-study course that you can just buy the books online, in which I tell everybody that even comes to register with me. Mm -hmm. um, um, it, you can buy the books online and then study and go take it. The only difference is that now I have the experience, I know the footprint yeah. for yeah. you to go yeah. through to become yeah. successful. Yeah. So that is what America, I, that, That's one you, thing. If yes. you don't know the, the, where to get it, it's a problem. Correct. So that is more of like what I do. So the basic requirement for this program is high school diploma. Mm -hmm. And then you have a government issue ID. Mm -hmm. These are the two main things that you need. Now, why do I say government issue ID? Because now, once you want to take the board exams, you will need a government issue ID mm -hmm. to take the board exams. Yeah. Why do I say high school diploma? Before you get hired in any hospital, you need a high school diploma mm -hmm. for them to know whether you can read and write. Okay? Yeah. So these are the main two things that you will need. And of course, um, once you have this stuff, you come in and then we'll tell you what we have on board and then you can register. All right, good, yeah. good. So I have this question from uh, uh, Isabella from New Jersey. Is <coughs> that so what, what are the prerequisite qualification, <coughs> which you just answered? <coughs> yes. For someone to enroll in your steroid processing training program. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, it's just it's just the what the high school diploma and then government issue ID. All right, good. Yeah. Then from Benjamin in, of Virginia, it says And then the money too. Money. I mean because you have you need to have the money to yeah. pay for the what? The the <laughs> the course. Yeah. So so <laughs> yeah, the, that, those not, are the basic it's uh, requirements. It's not free, you know. Um yeah. All right, good. So from Benjamin uh So um I think um you, you, you didn't mention about how much it costs yeah. to the program. Now, it, 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 it varies mm -hmm. based on, you know, the school. But here, 
we charge 2500 yeah. and this 2500 includes everything that yeah. will be provided yeah. which is um will provide you online access mm -hmm. to uh, uh, uh um doing the online quizzes yeah. Um, also, we have webinars mm -hmm. that you can have access to, be yeah. listening while it's driving or whatever. And then also, um, we also provide with the test books and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's all inclusive. Yeah. That is the 2,500. Okay. So what would be your website? The website link. Somebody would. So so if somebody want to register, um, once you type in www.njahti.org. You should be able to have access to you know register and what njahi stands for is simply new jersey allied health training institute that is just the abbreviated form yes all right good so from emily she's <laughs> in new york can you provide information about the duration of the program and flexibility in it offers to accommodate different schedules yes so we have we have in person and then we have online so the online is more of a um, webinar, yeah. so it's a self-paced study. Mm -hmm. um, so once you register for that, um, normally even though it's a self-paced study, we give you a duration of eight weeks mm -hmm. so that you can finish that. Um, but if it's in person also, it's also eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So in person you come, you sit in class and then you know um, we lecture you, break things down for you to understand so these are the two ways in which you can register and it's only on saturdays, saturdays. which is 9 a.m to 2 p.m 2 p.m so um i mean even if you work on weekends you still have access to the webinar mm -hmm. whereby when you miss a class on a saturday you can you still, can, you go, don't back still go back and watch it yeah. which makes it easier because a lot of people are already working yeah. and so you don't want to take that from them yeah. so whilst they're doing their work at the same time they can be studying to have a change of career. All right. So somebody is asking, Liam from PA, can you have double position with this kind of what program? Let's say uh, you, you, you are done with the program, mm -hmm. then can you work m m multiple jobs? Yes, of course. That makes it even nicer because yeah. we have so many different hospitals. Mm -hmm. So if you work in hospital A, seven to three, you can jump onto hospital B, maybe four to eight. So you can work in different hospitals. Um, even they have what we call the traveling, which even pays more. Uh, a lot of people will have their primary job, which we call the traditional job. Yeah. Okay, so they have that where they can get all their benefit and stuff. Um, they have that maybe seven to three, and they can do the traveling maybe from eight to twelve. Good. So it all depends on you, the individual. All right. So this is from Ava from Baltimore. Mm -hmm. She's asking, can you talk about the pay rate and uh, some of the benefits that the program comes with? And also, uh, what are the, some of the different facilities that you can work in with this program? Okay. So now with the pay rate, it all depends on the hospital, the state. Yeah. So many factors to consider. And then also your number of years of experience. Yeah. So we don't have exact figures out there as in um, this is how much you'll be looking at. Yeah. But nationally, on averagely, you're looking at um, about 18 to about $22 mm -hmm. between that range yeah. to um, start off yeah. without experience. Yeah. Okay. But once you have experience, you're looking at more than that. Yeah. Okay, and then once you also look at the traveling agency works, mm -hmm. that also you're looking at more. Mm -hmm. Okay, more like so, uh, like how, yeah. How much? So with the traveling, you're looking at between 30, 35, between thirty and about seventy dollars, yeah, depending on where you be, you know, on um, place. Mm -hmm. So that is how it is. Does the state have any influence on the pay? Or let's say if you live in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Do you, are you pay more of this? Yes. Well, like, so, like <laughs> so, so this is where a lot of folks come in and they ask, um, yeah, New Jersey, of course, New Jersey and New York, New York will pay more than New Jersey mm -hmm. because the cost of living in yeah, New York is high. high. So you have a lot of people living in Jersey by working in what? New York. New, New York. And I can use myself as an example. Yeah. I live in Pennsylvania, but I work in Jersey yeah. because why? Cost of living is cheaper, but the money is not as in New York. Yeah. I mean, New Jersey or New York. Yeah. Thank you for watching our interview program today. We appreciate your time and support. Sign up now at firepreneur.com for a free e-commerce business package and get ready to embark on your entrepreneurial journey. Stay tuned for another insightful business interview next week. 
See you soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Firepreneur. E-commerce on fire.